Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Divine Journey. So, we are actually pre-speed build at the moment. Um, I'm about to work on Thomcraft speed build, but I've actually been working on building over in the um, tech district. Um, and that is due to the fact that this district is probably the closest to being done, I would say, um, currently. <laughs> Agriculture district probably being the farthest, or Batania. <laughs> One of those two. Witchery and Thomcraft area are kind of in the middle. I mean, those districts have come a long way. And really, the library and the potion area in that Thomcraft district, in that magic district, are done for all practical purposes. I mean, well, the alchemy area, we still have to add a few things into there. Um, I had to do some conduit work in the library just to have more books kind of shuffling around. Blood magic area actually is probably the most complete, <laughs> now that I think about it, because that place is... That place just has some minor detail stuff left to put in. Um, but as far as the structure goes, I mean, that's mostly done. So, But anyways, I did work on the tech district because there was some stuff that was bothering me that I wanted to get in order. And there was some stuff I had to change my plans on, and I'll go over that in a second. Um, but first off, this little outbuilding, I went through and I cleaned a lot of this up. Um, oh, I didn't. Let me grab this real quick. Let me fix that. I forgot I pulled that up because... Yeah, I was messing. Okay, a couple things. Zachar Crystal, right? When I set up the recipe last episode for Molten uh, Molten Zacarium, which is the smelted one, I actually put this recipe into a molecular assembler. So whenever I was ordering my Zachari Zacarium uh, to finish automating that kind of stuff, it took me a minute because I was like, I ordered it and it was just like, it's crafting, but it's not doing anything. <laughs> then I realized that I put the recipe in the wrong place, so... Um, anyways, I did go through and clean this area up a bit. You can see a lot of the conduits are gone. This lever controls the fish. If I pull this, um, there we go. They all get cycled out, and, you know, if I want it to run, I can just pull that, but honestly, we have enough fish that we probably won't ever need that again. So it's just plugged up with a redstone conduit behind, um, the drying rack, so... But yeah, I went through and I cleaned this up. I haven't added the elevator to upstairs yet. The upstairs is very, very unfinished. But I did put a floor down. So at least that started. <laughs> so, but I, I'm not 100% sure how this, like if this is going to be the exact layout. Because we don't have the machines in here that we're going to end up adding. And this area over here, a lot of this is going to be stuff that takes itself to craft. Is going to go up here and some things like that. So I haven't, I haven't quite finished all that out. So... No roof on this yet. Um, and then if we come over to here, I did dark oak fences around this. Now, originally I was planning on... Sometimes this happens. Oh, that's strange. My statues are not working this time. They were working. But then I had to re-log because my sound was gone. I don't know. I have no clue why my statues... Well, my statues are not working presently. <laughs> Ever since I relogged because it was I had a sound bug and now they're not working. So, anyways, I'll try to get that sorted here in a bit. But um, originally I was planning on doing some stuff with carpenter's blocks, but um, I know you guys brought up in the comments the crash does seem to be related to the carpenter's blocks. Just a massive amount um, carpenter's blocks and different things that are having to load on this bridge. So, um, I did have a comment about, and it's a great great idea, about putting a chunk loader running down this. Um, and I actually, I tested it, and then I pulled it up, because I, I, I loaded this area, basically this intersection, but I didn't think about loading, or I didn't initially load, uh, and right after I pulled it up, I was like, well, I actually need to load all of this, but I didn't yet, so I haven't tested that yet. But I know just loading the crossroads here does not uh, change it. But probably loading all of this. Because the idea was that if we kept all this loaded all the time, that maybe it wouldn't lag as we render it. But I don't know if that's going to cause any other issues, having that, you know, rend or having that loaded all the time, which is possible. I mean, the, the lag spike back in there it doesn't bother me generally because I can shift it back behind the Thomcraft area or I can shift it forward. So if I'm working in Batania area or I'm working in Thomcraft area, it's really only going to happen when I trans when I go between um, the Batania area to the Thomcraft area. So it's not not a huge deal since we're kind of automating everything, but maybe once we get into actually working on the Batania area more, 
that may be a little bit different story, but anyways, I ran some fences around. Like I said, originally I was planning on carpenter's blocks, but then I was like, well, I think I need to lay off a little bit on the carpenter's blocks. So I just did dark oak fences and I think they look all right. Um, they don't affect load at all. And if we come over here, you can see they run all the way down and just kind of gives us a nice railing and some kind of contrast to um, just the plain Jane uh, stone road. I also looked at using the iron bars that we were using over here and up there, but I didn't like the way that those transition layers, right? They didn't look right. So plus they blend in with the stone so much that this dark oak looks so much better, so much better. Oh, and in addition, that guy spawned from that thing. Um, I still I still need to pull this thing off. There's a... Uh, right in here, right there. There is an aura node. So, and it's like a spooky biome. But anyways, I did work on leaves a bit more. And kind of bringing that stuff around. And actually, if we come over to here, you'll notice this heel top is covered. And I brought some leaves around through there. It's not totally done, but... It's a start, and there's a new pathway here that comes up, and look at this. We actually have another portal, and I used Ineffable Glass like um, Gone Ryu used in my All the Mods series yeah, with his nether portal. It keeps mobs from coming through, which is perfect for Belfs, right? Because those things want to come through and burn everything in sight. Well, Ineffable Glass, that's where it's at. And then we can just step through that and teleport. So just kind of have a nice little nether portal kind of tucked away over here. Um, inside of that hedge, so. And then if we come up here, I worked on this area a bit. I cleaned this area up. Um, this harvester is not currently harvesting anything. Same with the planter. It's not currently planting anything, but this one is doing ghost wood. And then we'll have a few more over here probably. But I'm kind of holding out to see kind of what I want to use there. Um, this had carpenter's blocks all the way around. I don't know if they got sawed off somehow. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to replace that, I guess. It had carpenter's blocks, but now they're gone. So, Or maybe I've just reached a point in the world where it's like, no more carpenter's blocks. And it just says no. Um, over here, I added ghost wood and stuff. And then it's just dark oak fence supports around this. And just kind of a little building. Now I know these saplings here are not going to grow. And I actually need to fill that in. Actually, I thought I filled that in. I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> I may not have. Um, I know those saplings aren't going to grow, but that's fine. Um, like I said, I kind of wanted something here to kind of frame in these drawers and make them look a little bit better. And so I used the same materials here and there that we use on that building. So it kind of adds some, uh, you know, general design to this this uh, district. And then over here, I finally got around to fixing up this bridge. So we have this kind of techie style, abnormally shaped bridge. And going through here, we have some ancient entity statues from all of our ancient entity killing and statues that aren't working. So, and a little bit more carpenter's blocks, but that's okay. <laughs> so, um, and then let's see, over there, nothing special. I did add a barley, um, a little barley setup, and I did try to go in there and and um, add those other seeds that we need to do, those essence seeds, but then I was like, oh my gosh, the lag's too terrible. So I backed away and <laughs> didn't do it, but I will get that done here soon because I figure it's about time we start. We start those up so we can start building those up. Um, okay, so I also did a bit of work in the quest book, okay? Because as you know, we're not really doing the... Um, Agricraft essence, the magical crops, agricraft seeds for the most part. So, since there's a big chunk of the quest book that is related to that, I went ahead and crafted a lot of that stuff off camera. We have 21 quests in farming, and we actually have four quests in insane amounts of magic that are done now. Uh, very minor things that I didn't really feel like we needed to cover on camera. So, if we look at farming, look at that. Um, most of these, like the runic altar and this stuff, which of course I didn't craft these, I uncrafted these. So if you recall, I've been using the, um, because you get Zavisio essence whenever you kill, kill the wither, um, this stuff right here. And then if you take, you can break, uh, oops, right here, Zavisio makes four Imperio 
and then Imperio makes four, Crucio, and so on. So I've been breaking that Zavisio down for the crafting instead of crafting it up. Okay. So we've got Copper Seeds. We get four Blitz Rods. We'll just move kind of quickly through this. I just like popping these quests on camera. Everything red, Redstone Seeds, we get four Basals Rods. Uh, Quicksilver, we get four Blizz Rods. Uh, that's gold, we get four Real Might Ore. Iron, we get four Arlamite ore. Uh, sheep seeds, we get three angel blocks. Cow seeds, we get a sound muffler. And we're doing okay on inventory space. The strong infusion stone, we get three signalum servos. Uh, Imperial essence, we get eight resonant flux ducts. Lapis seeds, we get four rupee ore. Creeper seeds, we get a needle gun. Um, Enderman Seeds, three Signal Nuggets, and a Signal Security Lock. Extreme Infusion Stone, we get ten Growth Pulsars. Um, Quartz Seeds, we get four Fans. Zavisio Essence, four Terra Steel Ingots. And then over here, this is, like these I'm not able to craft yet. All these ones that are flashing, no, I can't craft them yet because these require Draconic Evolution. Wyvern Cores... Um, Zavisio blocks, gold seeds, energetic alloy blocks, and extreme crafting. We do have extreme crafting unlocked, but we're not going to be able to do that yet. And then Draconium. I was thinking there was one. No, I guess they're all wyvern cores. Um, but then in addition, there was this quest line here, which is to make these mass Zavisio blocks, which is nine Zavisio makes mass Zavisio, which we actually have mass Zavisio being stored in the system because it takes Zavisio, it makes Zavisio blocks, then it makes mass Zavisio blocks in a compacting drawer. So this we already had done, we get a Bedrockium drum. And then right here to make the Zivuno, it's five Zavisio, and then Zivuno, two of that makes Zivaduo, two Zivaduo makes Zivatrio, and so on. Um, so we've got that, we get a diamond for the Zivuno. Um, for the Zivi Duo, we get a block of diamonds. Zivi Trio, we get Vibrant Alloy. And then we get Elementium. And then we get Terra Steel. Okay, so we are up to working on the Zivi Sexto. And if we take a look here... Okay, that's the one we got too. Um, so I'm just kind of... I just kind of worked through those. And I went ahead and automated it all. You know, because it's something that's going to be handy to have it automated. So I went ahead and automated that. And then also the Zacharium... I went ahead and automated that stuff off camera, um, and then pop it in viewer. Went ahead and automated that off camera. Uh, and one thing that's interesting is I totally missed this, and Atricus brought it up in the comments. Death protection pop it, and normally I go through this pretty well, but I I totally missed it. So this is what we were looking at, right? To make the poppets, we need the poppet imbuer and all that. But he said the first few, you can do this. <laughs> I totally missed it. Arcane Infusion. Take your poppet, drop of luck, diamond vapor, two gold blocks, and then we have all this stuff. Um, well, this isn't exactly automated, but I have a lot of it right now. And uh, we do need to get that automated. But that'll make a death protection poppet. But the reason that this recipe in, is here is because it's faster in the long run. Okay? So... We could craft it this way if we wanted to. I'm probably just, um, uh, well, I might make it. I might make it in the um, Arcane Fusion, because that is really cheap compared to this method. Um, but that method is actually fairly cheap now, too, because if you take a look here, um, at, like, say, barley, we have 573 seeds. So all those seeds I just dumped into the AE system because we're not using them right now. So I was like, eh, whatever. I'll just throw them in there. That way we get the quest knocked out and our farming is not like, what was it, like 20 or 30% complete. Now it's 79% complete. Um, and then insane amounts of magic. Four quests that I did here. Tallow candles. That's done. We get a mana pump. Um, and then the void armor. Because this stuff is not expensive. Just a bit of void metal. So... Um, and then, oh, I need to go over the update as well, um, which I need to... And one thing I need to do, now that, now that I think about it, now that I look at that, because I made this armor before, the up, before I updated. I don't know if it was before the update, but it was before I updated. And, uh, let's see, interface terminal, we need the enchanted. Oh, I don't know why I can't find it. Derp. I need to take this out. 
We're going to put our Knowledge Core into here, and Enchanted Fabric was changed um, in this update. So now it requires a Mana Pearl instead of Spellbinding Cloth. Okay, so let me just get a Mana Pearl, and this was because it did not like auto-crafting. Um, it kept acting up, you know. Um, it wasn't just us, it was, you know, that was just how it was, and... We're going to go ahead and save that pattern. There we go. New Enchanted Fabric recipe. So I'm glad that that was changed because I will, I mean, making the, the Void Armor, this is the Void Armor, by the way, sitting right here. Um, making that, it wasn't terrible, but it also wasn't great either because I had to order each piece one at a time for it to work. Uh, now we'll be able to order larger amounts of that Enchanted Fabric and just have it crafted for us. So that's done, um, and that bumps us up to, I mean, really all we have is this quest, which should have been completed, because we've crafted this before, but it wasn't completed. Um, let's see, the distillation pattern encoder, which, yeah, oh, that's fine. Uh, capacitor seeds, which we can craft. This isn't all that bad, actually. And then we have the Zakar stuff. I mean, not the Zakar, the Icar stuff. So, right up here. And then we're done with insane amounts of magic. We're at 85% right now. Um, also, another thing that I want to go over about the most recent updates. Um, there is some stuff that doesn't really impact us too much right now. But uh, the Phytogenic Insulator was disabled. Now, I'm not going to... Even though it's been disabled, I'm not going to remove my Phytogenic Insulators. Because the main reason it was removed was because it was being exploited for certain seeds. Um... That is not the case here. <laughs> I'm farming like sugarcane and wheat. I don't have any of the uh, whatever seed that was. Um, I have things like this, mushrooms and stuff like that. And I mainly have this here because it reduces on lag compared to regular farms. Regular farms are about the most laggy thing that you can ever set up. Phytogenic insulators are very lagless. <laughs> so... Um, that's why I have them there, so I'm not going to be removing those because we're not exploiting them in, within the series. So, um, if we were, then yeah, I would probably remove them, but we are not. So, anyways, moving on, um, I think the first thing that I want to do is I want to make our puppet. I want to make our puppet. And we are going to go with the infusion route first, I guess. I mean, I've got it... I mean, I could literally probably open this up and just craft one, but um, do I want to do that? I don't know, because I mean, really the infusion, yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> Never mind, I don't want to do the infusion. Make me, pop it in viewer. It's got all this stuff available, because I was setting up the recipe, and then we'll just craft Death Protection Poppets, and actually, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just automate it, because we're definitely going to need it. So, Death Protection Poppet is crafted like... Oh, what am I missing? Aha, drop of Luck. So, Refined Evil, Tear of the Goddess, Nether Warp, Mandrake Root. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much everything that we need. Let me pop over there. we got to get this crafted real quick. Um, get our Drop of Luck crafted. We need to automate that before too long, which is Cauldron. Not today, because I have other plans for today, but soon. <laughs> very, very soon. So, Witch's Cauldron, let's go ahead. Mutandus and Nether Wart. We'll get our bit of Mutandus Extremis. And then I'm going to point Drop of Luck. Yeah, that's everything. Oh, whoops, I did not have my... There we go, fix that real quick. And then we'll throw all this in there together. That, 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 that. Okay, I had to break and replace um, part of the altar because it was it had bugged out. Um, which was weird because the Mutantus Extremis worked the first time whenever we crafted it, but it would not work the second time. And, yeah, I have no clue... As to why, like, what was going on with it. So, now if we throw these items into there, we're going to get circles, okay? Yeah, it had a... Hey, buddy. Alright, it's a uh, side effect of witchery. 
spawning those little guys in. Okay, so we got our drop of luck. Um, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. It won't be so bad once we get that automated. Uh, I don't know why the altar bugged on me, but it was a very easy fix. Break the altar, replace it, let it recharge up. Okay, so then we can put our drop of luck into there, and we'll encode that. That's how you make a death protection poppet. And then we'll just add that into our molecular assembler. And there we go. And then if we order ourselves death protection poppet. Uh-huh. <laughs> For some reason, like all my other recipes, pull this page up. Death protection poppet does not. Make me a hundred of them. Okay, <laughs> I have no clue as to what would cause that, but here we go. There's death protection, Baba. Yeah. Okay, and let's see if I was to. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I may have to set that up a little bit differently and not have it. If it keeps acting up, I may not have be able to have it in molecular assemblers, and instead, um, I'll need to have it in crafters or something and have the stuff ship out. Um, so anyways, we got our death protection poppet. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make ourselves a tag lock kit. Bone needle and a glass bottle. And actually, did I, did I automate bone needles? I did. Okay. So go ahead. And let's actually go ahead and make a recipe for this. This is something you use from time to time. So tag lock kit. There we go. I want to see if I can order that. If I put it into a molecular assembler. So, tag lock kit. Make me... Well, yeah, that works. Alright, so there's our tag lock kit. And then what we need is we need DNA, basically, from the person that we want to bind this to. And in this case, I want to bind it to myself. So, let's fly over here to our bed. And I can get a sample of our hair. Um, hopefully it counts me as having slept. I don't know. Like, maybe. Right click that. Yeah, it's not bound. Shift right click. I'm sorry. Shift right click and it's bound to, to Asgard. Okay. So then we can take that. And take that. And we get a death protection poppet that is bound to moi. And we'll go ahead and take that. You do not get your tag lock kit back. It's already been contaminated with DNA, so let's just throw that thing down. Actually, I think it goes inside the poppet, doesn't it? Isn't that how actual, like, voodoo stuff works? It goes in there. Anyways, this should... Did it not... Cool. It did not detect it. Awesome. Awesome times. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'll make another one later, and... It'll count. It probably because I didn't manual detect when it wasn't bound. So, which I mean, really, I could order another poppet imbuer. Let's go ahead and do that, actually. So then all I have to do is get the drop of luck. A lot of steps involved, but not actually that expensive, in truth. So, I mean, you can see it's kicking through this stuff right now. Um, the longest part is crafting the potions. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to either keep so much Zakar crystals on hand... Or I'm going to um, keep so many of the Splash Potions of Harming on hand. I haven't really decided which one I want to go, which route I want to go with. Probably the Zakar Crystal, honestly. Just keep like, um, I don't know, 512. <laughs> keep me 512 Zakar Crystal on hand or something. Like a whole storage drawer. But Anyways, so we got our Death Protection Poppet. And now we can get into Infusion. Character Infusion. Okay. That's what we're kind of working towards. So that way we can summon Torment. Because we do need an, like infusion power. It gives you like an, a little power bar that you can use. And that's what we want to go with. But actually before we do that, let's do one thing real quick. Let's go ahead and make it... We're going to set up a little bit different of a system. So that we always have Zakar crystals on hand. So let me get a drawer. Actually, I don't think I have framed... Make me one of these. There we go. And let's just make a frame drawer. There we go. 32 stacks is what it's going to hold. Um, and what we're going to do, let's get ourselves 
an export bus as well as a storage bus and I also want a crafting card one of these I tell you what we'll use a little spot right over here um, so the, the frame drawer is gonna set like right there okay and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put an export bus onto the back of this um, or the top or let's see well you know what I could do I might end up upgrading this to a drawer controller later on um, if we find that we're using a lot of this type of setup to keep a lot of things stocked but for right now we're gonna put the export bus on the well actually we'll put the export bus on the bottom and then let me grab that put this back and in the export bus we're gonna put our crafting card and we're gonna say crafting behavior um, it says use stocked items or craft items while exporting we're gonna change that to do not use stocked items only craft items while exporting okay <clears throat> and what that does is that's gonna prevent we're gonna have a storage bus on this as well and that's gonna prevent this from um, taking the stuff from the storage bus that's in the frame drawer and then cycling it around and exporting so it's only going to craft new ones when there's space in the frame drawer that it can export and then what I want to do is I want to get a uh, Zachar crystal just a standard um, this one right here that takes the potion the splash potion of harming make me do we have one I guess we have one um, we're gonna take a Zachar crystal and we're gonna put this into the export bus and then all we have to do is just get ourselves some fluix and just connect these two up and uh, we'll make a new connection um, I still need to come through and I actually need to put these up into there and facade them I just haven't done it yet so for right now we'll just plug it up like that and we'll put Zachar crystal into there and then let me lock it and then if we take a look here um, well let me look right here you can see that it's crafting uh, well that's actually for the it always I don't understand the furnaces because they lock up so bad but you can see it's crafting Zachar crystal right there um, it's crafting the potions of healing that's gonna be the main thing that like slows it down um, but then every time it crafts one it's gonna be able to make three so it's not a big deal okay make me a pop it imbuer yeah see now it just crafted it right up so okay and it did use the Zachar crystal that was in there apparently oh you know what it was it was because I pulled that Zachar crystal out I think is what messed it up and it was like I'm trying to make a molten one or something okay that that was probably on me actually all right so we'll let that run for a bit I want to go ahead and start stockpiling up those Zachar crystals um, I may eventually add like a storage upgrade to that but for right now um, as it is is good so okay so let's get into our infusion and I'm gonna grab our brews and infusions book um, well actually I think the one I want to use is the spirit of otherware yeah it's right here okay and um, this requires redstone soup potion of swiftness two eyes vendor drop of luck and wool of bat so let's go ahead and get this stuff crafted up that we're gonna need and I think first up let's start with the mutandus extremis okay. I think I've got everything so we'll just toss those two into there get that going and we'll get our mutandus extremis and then we'll toss all of that in there and get our drop of luck okay and then we're also going to need redstone soup oh that's actually another drop of luck <laughs> whoops let me get the stuff to make one more of those real quick okay so it's making that drop of luck and then for the redstone soup it was mandrake root belladonna uh wool of bat tongue of dog and then something else what was the other thing that we needed redstone okay so there's that and that 
and we'll get this brewed up real quick. And let me throw on our witch's hat and our witch's robe so we get that extra chance. And we'll throw all of that in there and it just changed colors. That means I think it's done. So let's get ourselves a bottle or some bottles. Did I ever automate bottles? Yes. Okay, they're automated. And we'll just right click that. We got one redstone soup. Okay. That's fine. Okay, and then we can get our spirit of otherware. So drop of luck, redstone soup, two eyes vendor, wool of bat, and then we're gonna have to make a potion of swiftness. So two of those. Wool of bat. And then do I have any swiftness? I have potion of swiftness and splash potion of swiftness. Yeah, this seems to be the right one. Three, seven, three, eight, two, five, eight. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we have those on hand. And then what we'll do is, let me grab a bucket. I don't know if this is a visual bug or if it's actually in there. Yeah, well, okay. Anyways, we'll throw this stuff into there. And we'll get that going. And looks like it's already done. Our altar is strong enough, like it finishes like everything. And we'll go ahead and get that, and we got two Spirits of Other Whale. Okay, so now that that's done, let me actually charge our wireless terminal up. And I'm going to go ahead and switch armor. Now this poppet, this death protection pop that we bound ourselves, we need to make sure it's on it, it's in our inventory, or we need to craft a poppet shelf. Um, which I'm not going to worry about that right this second. But poppet shelves, you can have them in the world. We will use that later because I'm going to use the setup like what I had. Oh, I did a tutorial video on it. I mean, it's a little bit more involved in this pack, mainly due to the fact that the death protection poppets are a little bit more expensive, um, you know, as far as the initial cost of them. But binding them and everything, we're going to use a setup a little bit later on for death protection. So we always, we have death protections automated, to where they're bound to us automatically and then what we'll do is have a poppet shelf so that we can never die um, basically is what that means <laughs> so um, later on whenever we fight like the chaos dragon and stuff it, it could come in handy also a little bit later when we fight death um, i'm not for sure since we have all this avicio stuff i'm not for sure how much of a threat death is going to pose but he is probably i would say he's harder than chaos dragon but it just depends on the pack too um, I mean, he doesn't have his, like, the instant kill super death that Chaos Dragon has, but he's a lot stouter and takes a lot longer to kill, um, especially being immune to range damage, but... Okay, and now that that's done, let me pull up Circle Magic, and we are going to look at Rite of Infusion, and we're wanting to do the one that uses this one right here. You must stand in the circle, and we need a Spirit of Otherware, okay? And then in addition, we are going to need some chalk, so let's go ahead and get... Um, no, not regular. I need otherware chalk and golden chalk. And we need to make ourselves, uh, oops, what did I make? Oh, I, thought, I thought I had a quest completed there. We're going to need a 7x7 seven seven and an 11x11. Eleven eleven. So we're going to go ahead and set this up. We're going to do our golden chalk right there. And this should be in range of the altar. And then we need to do a 7x7. Seven seven. So we're going to come out, um, Come out two and then put an other word glyph and then come out two, put an other word glyph. That way we have seven in length. And then let's see, is it it's three and then diagonal. So there's our seven by seven otherware chalk circle. And then we're going to need the eleven by eleven. And just bear in mind that as far as being in range of your altar, if this stuff takes altar power, which this does, you can see four thousand. I'm pretty sure most all the circle magic does, but some of it you can use with charge of stones, but um, as far as being in range of the altar, this is the only part that necessarily has to be in range of the altar, that center point of it. The rest of the stuff can be out of the, the altar's range, it doesn't really matter, so anyways, we'll put all that stuff into there, and here we go, we are ready. We got our death protection poppet at the ready, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our spirit of otherware, toss that down. Shift right click and pow. Now that big explosion there would have killed us, but you can see instead it consumed our death protection poppet. And we have a little bar over here on the left hand side of the screen. That is our current infusion level. 
Okay. And what's nice is we can actually take a witch's hand. There's different infusions. There's like four different ones. Um, I usually go with Spirit of Otherware because it's kind of handy to have. Like what we can do is we can take our witch's hand um, and hold that. And there we go. See, I can teleport. There's a bunch of stuff you can do. I can't remember all of it. I know Shift. Let's see. Let me actually look on the wiki real quick. Okay, I've got it. Um, That's what it was. If you shift right click while snaking and hold it. There we go. You can see release mouse button to set recall point. And then what we can do is we can come over here and then we can just shift, shift right click. And we teleport back to our recall point. We can have one recall point saved at a time. And then in addition, what we can do if we can find a mob here. There we go. There's an Arasaur. Um, with this thing, we can left click the Arasaur. And it teleports both of us into the air. Um, and so, of course, the Arasaur falls and takes damage. And then if we shift left click him, look, it takes us back to our recall point. So quite, quite useful. And then, of course, we have the teleport. If you right-click, we can teleport a short distance. Hold right-click, and it'll teleport us a long distance. So there we go. So quite useful. Um, I actually quite like the uh, infusion of otherware. Some of the other ones are like uh, you can. I can't remember exactly what all of them do. Otherware usually is the one I go for, but... Um, one of them lets you control mobs, lets you enthrall mobs, and then use them to, like, fight. And then another one, um, I don't remember. <laughs> there's, there's one that lets you, like, push mobs and stuff. I remember if they're wearing, like, metal armor, you can, like, push them really far and stuff, like, knock back. Um, but, yeah, if you go on the Witchery Wiki, it tells you about all of that stuff. Or just Google, um witchery character infusion it should pull it up so and then once that um once the little infusion bar runs out um you'll have to do another rite of infusion so uh, which we've got another one of those other wear spirit of other wear um it's not gonna be something that i use all the time but it, you know it's kind of handy in certain situations especially the recall point i love the recall point um probably the most <laughs> so at least until we get into draconic evolution and have a better form of teleportation so okay so now that we've got that done now we can continue on through this mainly because of this scroll right here we can't summon that boss until we have an infusion bar so imp summoning is the next step and what we're going to need to do is we need to get ourselves a demonic contract and out of curiosity yeah see we've got 19 zakar crystals now um it's working through those, and then, like, how are we on Ghostwood, Barley, yeah, we're starting to run out on those things. It's going to eat through those things pretty quickly, but um, at least that way we already have some Zakar crystals being passively created. And I can always speed those things up with, like, uh, time blocks, and if, if, that, if the need arises for that. All right, so we want to get ourselves a demonic contract. Use to cast spells with your imp, so it may return the Torment Scroll. So this requires just... Raw pork chop, um, that's question mark, raw pork chop, which is, we're going to need to make some more mutandus, aren't we? Yeah. Egg, XL of the horn one, and mandrake root. I actually think probably next episode we may automate the witch's cauldron, because I'm about tired of making mutandus related stuff, and drops of luck, and all that. So we may get that automated next episode. <laughs> so, alright, so there's six mutandus, and then, oh yeah, we're going to need uh, rotten flesh. And then we'll get this thing crafted, rotten flesh, and piece of mutandus gets us a question mark, raw pork chop, string, paper, demonic contract. Okay, and then in addition, let's go to demonology, and we are going to want to get, well actually, imp summoning right here, this is done, demonic contract. And we get four cookie jars. And then, um, call forth an imp, the inner area must be clear. I believe, was 11 by 11 what we used down here? Or was that 15 by 15? I think it was 15 by 15. Yeah, that was 15 by 15. So what we're going to do, let's get ourselves our chalk. And I can't remember if I mentioned last episode. I was kind of sad. I did, I was messing around with the uh, Thaumic Restorer. It does not work with chalk. It does not work with infusion stones from magical crops. So that's sad day. Sad day. 
So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, just two in. I don't think our chalk's going to make it. Nope. <laughs> it didn't make it. Okay, let me order. Um, well, actually, I'll just use this ritual chalk. And then infernal chalk was blaze powder and nether wart. But I mean, really, once we get the cauldron automated, it's not really going to matter if we can repair the chalks. I mean, they're cheap to make. And they do last for a little while. So, that's okay. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm putting the the ritual down here for summoning the flame imp. I'm actually just putting it inside of this larger one that we use for summoning the demon. Because you can have them stack like that. So, if you had, say, a ritual here that t takes an 11 by 11. You had another one that takes 7 by 7. You have another one that takes the... Um, or, I'm sorry, 15 by 15, 11 by 11, and then 7 by 7. You can put those all inside of each other and do all the different rituals through that ritual circle. It's not a problem. So, um, so for this, to summon the imp, we're going to need refined evil, demonic blood. Then we're going to need an ender pearl. And an attune stone. doesn't have to be charged. So let's order one of those. It's actually going to take a second to craft. And then one other thing that we are going to need to get ourselves is a tag lock kit. Because we're going to have to bind this demon to us. Now, to do this, we don't actually use the tag lock on ourselves. We're going to use it on the demon. So let's get, there we go, there's our attune stone. And then let me go ahead and pull this off. Alright, so we're going to throw all three of these things into there. And then just shift right click. Oh, we need more coven members. Oh, whoops. Okay, we're going to have to work on our coven. Totally forgot we had to do that already. Okay, so I think next up we're going to have to make a familiar. Um, so that we can start getting coven witches. To make our coven, to get our imp, to get the torment fight. So we've got the infusion done. At least that part's done. Okay, so to bind a familiar, you can either use an owl. Um, which, if I recall, owl does flight stuff with the broomstick right it makes it better like you're flying better with a broomstick the cat is for more pvp focused it's like curses and stuff like that and then the toad um better brews so five percent chance for extra brew and then you can get a bonus to the effects of your brews now normally i go with the toad but since we're going to be automating the witch's cauldron probably next episode there's not a whole lot of reason um, to go with the toad um, it is a very involved process because you have to get critter snares, which are quite involved within this, uh, to get those. Which we're going to be automating those very, very soon because we're going to be needing them for future endeavors quite a bit. But um, I'm not too worried about any of the familiars because I can fly as is. Um, brews are going to be automated and then it's not really on our server. I'm not too worried about stronger curses. But I do think I'm going to go with the cat because it's very straightforward to do. And the question is... I don't think there's any way to summon a cat within this pack. So I'm going to have to fly around and see if I can find a jungle. Um, the other two do require critter snares. So... And then... I just realized I did forget to move my journey map stuff over. That's fine. So I've got to fly around and try to find a jungle. And try to capture an ocelot. Is our goal right now. So I'll be back in a bit. Once I find a jungle for us. Okay, scratch that. <laughs> Jungles are a pain to find. Ocelots are a pain to find. So instead, and plus I noticed right here, we're going to have to get owls automated and frogs automated or toads. Um, so we might as well go ahead and start working towards those since we're going to have to do it anyways. And the first step, because these are, we're going to have to mutate creatures to get these, and we're going to need to get critter snares, okay? And we're going to eventually need critter snares for crafting this anyways. So we might as well go ahead and start moving into critter snares and start working on that automation process. So what we're going to do, the first thing is, actually let me look and see here cobwebs because we don't have these uh, man infused string alchemic chemistry set crucible spinning wheel um, I think probably probably this method would be the best 
Or wait, did we already automate cobwebs? No, okay. We didn't automate cobwebs. So I'm just going to make a quick recipe here and say, because mana infused string is so cheap to make. There we go. Um, oops, wrong terminal. Just so when we need them, they're available to us. And we'll throw that into there. Okay, so that part's done. And so what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to automate. Basically, it's an in-world craft um, using a zombie, a cobweb, and four alder saplings. So what we're going to do is let's get ourselves some autonomous activators. And I want four of these. And then I'm also going to want a powered spawner. And let's go ahead and order that. You know what I want to do, actually? Um, let's, let's see. Let me get a, I think it's time we set up a um, quantum link over to the mob building. So let me get uh, 16 of these, two of these, and then a singularity. I'm going to go set up a quick little setup here, um, just a quantum link chamber. And we're going to start, this is actually going to be the process of a couple episodes, like this episode and probably the next episode, getting our critter snares automated, and then we'll get like bats automated and some stuff like that. But to make powered spawners, I'm going to need more flight control units, which take bat souls. So might as well go ahead and get this done because I've been putting it off for whatever reason and it's time that we do it. So I'll be back in just a minute once I get a quantum link hooked up over in the mob building. Okay, I got a little setup here, uh, quantum link, and then some cables and stuff over in the mob area. So we're finally going to be using this spot, right? I did say that we were going to be doing some mob-related stuff here soon. Um, I didn't think we were going to get into crit critter snares this episode, but I totally forgot about the coven. Okay, now I need to go get four bats, because we need to make a, or actually five bats. Um, because I want to make a powered spawner for bats. Because we need those for a number of things, namely the powered spawner, but also we're going to need them. Um, we're going to need bats when it comes to making those bat critter snares for Draconic Evolution. So let me go down. So I will be back in a minute, once again, once I get the five bats that I want uh, for this project. Okay? Okay, so now what we need to do, let me order four... How am I missing four obsidian? I'm not. What are you talking about? Okay, maybe it would... I don't know. It stopped registering that. Oh, I'm so happy this, this... Finding bats for that takes a while. It actually takes quite a while. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and take like four of these. And we're going to... Oh yeah, I need uh, XP. Okay. I got our bats, so I'm making our flight control units right now. Um, these are done. Go ahead and drop that into there. Go. Go. And go. Okay. That'll get us our four flight control units. And then I want an empty powered spawner. You should have everything. Oh. Forgot to throw those in there. Okay, give me a powered spawner. I'm really happy that that's the last time I have to go bat hunting. Because I hate that. <laughs> Actually, cannot stand it. And, let's see. Also, this soul binder. I need to move this thing. In fact. And we are going to automate this as well. Just in the process. Because I'm going to need a lot more powered spawners moving forward. And I think we're going to put this... Well, actually, yeah, we're going to put it right up here. Oh, yeah, most of it's interfaces that pump out. Okay, yeah, so we're going to put the powered, sp or the soul binder just right here. And then let's go ahead and get ourselves an interface. And we're going to just quickly automate this thing um, as well. We're not going to fully automate it right this second. Um, and it's because I need to get the powered spawner set up, and then we'll come back over here and we'll fully automate this. But I want to go ahead and get it put down. And what I want to do is go ahead, right click the bottom of that so it feeds into the soul binder. The soul binder is going to push pull from the bottom. Go ahead and, whoops, well, that's fine. <laughs> it's just cobblestone, I'm not that worried about it. So, okay, so that's done. 
And then what we're going to do, let's get our powered spawner. Should be done. And then, do I happen to have an anvil? Yeah. Go ahead and grab that. Oh, actually, I need to run this to the soul binder, though, first. Yeah, I need a spawner. Swarm spider sounds good. We'll throw that in there. We'll throw in our soul vial, 15 levels. And this is going to take just a minute. Oh, yeah, I didn't run power. Let me get... energy conduits, and we'll just plug this up real quick uh, through the back. will be as good as anything. Yeah, I'll just come through and I'll facade that. A little bit lighter. Um, that stuff's not visible from the bottom anyways. Okay, we'll run that over. That's got power now. And so we're just waiting for this to get done. And I'll go ahead and throw this down. Not too worried about, I have so many XP levels, I'm not too worried about making the most of my XP because we have XP levels for days, like 1,500 almost, so, I mean, pulling out 50 levels was like nothing. It didn't, it didn't even like, I don't even think it took a level off of that. We have so much XP. Okay, so we just pulled in our spawner. Probably shouldn't have set that yet. There we go. Broken bat spawner. And then we'll just put this together with our powered spawner and... We got a bat powered spawner. Awesome. Okay, and so then all we have to do is let's pop over here and we're going to set up our powered spawner. We're going to automate bat souls. And then I'm going to rinse and repeat this for zombies, endermen, um, villager. No, not villagers, right? Villagers won't work in it, which is fine. We'll probably do like we did on Project Ozone for villagers. That's fine. I'll get one later. Um, we'll set our powered spawner up right there. And then let me get some energy conduits. Go ahead and give me like 20 of those. And we'll go right down through the bottom of the floor here because there is a tesseract. Actually, I'm just going to pull this up. I don't have to facade it really. And we'll do just like that. I will have to facade the bottom. That's okay. Okay, so that's getting power. And oops, I want to change this to... Um, well, actually, always active, but we're going to set it over to capture. We're not going to set it to spawn. So it's not going to spawn unless there's something in here that can capture. Okay, and then let's get ourselves an interface. There we go, and we're going to set this to push-pull from the back. And then we'll just put down our interface right there, and we'll right-click the back of it so that it knows it's feeding into the powered spawner. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a recipe. Well, actually, let me get a... Kind of nice, I got all these bats flying around here. Let me get a soul vial. See, they're so hard to capture, right? There we go. There we go. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a recipe here and say that if you take a empty soul... Oops, wrong terminal. I always do that. If you take an empty soul vial processing, you're going to get a bat soul vial. And we'll go ahead and encode that. And we'll just put this into the interface. And then I want to go ahead and set up a quick recipe here for flight control unit. Because we have not automated the flight control unit, we've automated the empty one so far. So we're going to say that if you take a flight control unit and a bat soul vial, that you're going to get... And actually, I have to go over there and... Man! Kind of a little bit of a detour from witchery here somewhat, but... Um, oh yeah, and we're going to have to feed it levels. That's fine. That's okay. I have a plan for that. Slight detour from witchery, but we do need these set up because this ties into our critter snares. Because we're going to need these spawners in place for our critter snares. The flight control unit, I need to make more power spawners. That's really what it is. So that makes a flight control unit and we will encode it. Okay. And so now we'll pop that, or actually, sorry, we'll pop that into interface terminal, the soul binder right here. There's your first recipe. That's how you make a flight control unit. And so now if I was to order um, a flight control unit, so we order that, you'll see that, um, oh, this is active with signal, always active. You'll see that a uh, soul vial comes in here and it starts running through. I do need to get a capacitor. Octatic capacitor, there you go. And it made the soul vial. And if we take a look in here, the flight control unit, oh yeah. 
forgot the XP part. <laughs> okay, let me do. Let me take care of that. So Ender Chest or um, Ender Tank. I'm sorry. Let's get two of these. And technically, we have an XP line, but that's feeding into our XP spot. All right, feeding into our obelisk. And so now I want a line that pulls out from the obelisk and pumps into a line that feeds stuff, for, like Ender IO stuff, for example, that takes XP. So in this case, I think the main thing is Soulbinder, because it's not going to be automated if I have to go over there every time and say, use player XP. Um, so I want our Ender tanks, and then let me get, like, I don't know, Lime. Give me two Floral Lime powder. And then also give me some pressurized fluid conduits. Will be good. Okay, so right back here, it's the middle one. Um, we are going to have um, our ender fluid conduits. We're going to have these be, I mean, ender fluid conduit. Our ender tanks are going to be white, white lime. Okay. And we'll just put these down, I guess, right beneath it. Um, or no, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Pull that up. We'll pull that up. I'm going to put the ender tank down in there. And then we're just going to put uh, conduits. That way I can facade this. Um, let me pull those up for just a second. Okay, and we're going to say extract because this is a, this can be pulled out in fluid form. So there we go. And then let me put this back real quick. And then we'll just pop over to our experience or our uh, soul binder. And we'll plug this up so that it has access to XP from our XP network. And it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna keep draining because once this ender tank's filled, I mean that's all it's gonna drain. And this soul binder only consumes experience when it's needing it for crafting. Okay, it's only gonna take in as much as it needs. So then we'll just put uh you know, pull that off, connect it up to the soul binder, connect that, and we're gonna say EU extract always active. Okay. And that should be good. So let me pull this up. Flight control units. Oh, you know what? This might be different. Now that I think about it, this might be different. Um, let me get the flight control units. Oops, wrong terminal. 5709. 5709. But this one doesn't display health. I think it's a little bit different. So we're going to change that over. And we'll put that back in there. Okay, now we should be all set. We'll re-encode that. And then we'll open up our soul binder, throw that in. And then if we ordered flight control units, make me two of those. Okay, it says it's crafting. Okay, it looks like it just made it. There we go. We now have three flight control units. Okay, so it seems to be working. Seems to be working well um, since I changed that over. Because what it was was that one mob that I had captured like manually had six health. The ones from these, it doesn't display their health because they've never actually spawned into the world. So there we go. So that's done. And then I can just add additional spawners. So if I was to order, say, another powered spawner, um, we take a look. And well, we're missing netherrack. Oh, let me actually I'll tell you what it is. One other thing I have to do here. Okay, so let me get a soul vial here. Let me throw it in here because this recipe, it doesn't know how to make the one that we just made or the one that we have the flight control unit set to. This one, I set it up as the bat that has the health bar. So if you look right here, it says bat health of six. Yeah, we have to make sure that these line up to the automated variant. So now if I order a powered spawner, well, it's going to be short netherrack and ender crystal. Ender crystal I'm going to have to set up. So I do have some stuff. It's going to be it's going to be a little bit involved getting all the infrastructure set up because this takes the enderman soul vial, so I need to get an enderman uh, spawner set up next, I think. And then I need to sort out netherrack. It gets pulled out. Or actually, you know what it is? Why I never have netherrack on hand now that I think about it? It's our obsidian setup. I have netherrack pumping into that. I'm going to change that over real quick. Because for a while we had so much netherrack, so I was like, eh, whatever. We'll throw it all in there. And 
Yeah, it ran through that and then just kept on running through things. <laughs> so, oh, we got that running. I need to get, we're going to redo power soon. So, okay, yeah, it was this magma crucible right here. I had netherrack pumping in there because we had so much there for a little while. I was like, I need to use this stuff up. Well, now we don't have like any. So, yeah, I just, I pulled that out of the config, changed it to green and got that pumping in. So we'll stop wasting our netherrack. So I've got to build that stuff back up, but once I get that built back up, it shouldn't be a problem. I was thinking, for some reason, I was thinking it was the Thomcraft area. I totally forgot I put Nether Rack in there. Uh, that was that was a kind of dumb move on my part. So, but once I run the quarry back through there, we'll be set. So, all right. Anyways, I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode. Next episode, we will probably automate Witch's Cauldron, and we're going to be working on Critter Snare automation. Okay, because getting this stuff in was the main thing. Um, to start out with and the first step that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to automate critter snares themselves which use zombies and then um, depending we might possibly go ahead and automate the bat ones as well because it's pretty they're both pretty straightforward and pretty simple to do i have an idea of the setup i want to do i'm going to mess around with it and we might change it up a little bit um or i might change it up a little bit before next episode but um i think i've got a pretty good idea of how i want to do that so We'll, we'll get that stuff knocked out, and then, or, well, we'll knock out the critter snares. We can't do this part yet, because we're going to need the wispy cotton. Um, so that's that's pretty much right in here, this area. But that means we have to get into the dream dimension. So, but once we get critter snares automated, then we can get our owls and our frogs um, summoned. And then we're going to make spawners with those. We'll capture one, we'll get it as a companion, and then we'll start collecting our Coven of Witches. We're going to try to get most of that done next episode. <laughs> so we'll try to get, uh, I don't know, we might put the, well, no. I, yeah, we're probably going to, we're just going to try to do that. It might be the over the course of like an episode and a half, but that's going to be our goal is Witches Cauldron, Critter Snares, get a familiar, get Witch Coven started, and all that. So then we can summon an imp, and then we can summon that boss, and that's going to put us at like... <laughs> A lot of this, knocking through a lot of this stuff. And getting, getting Critter Snares and the Cauldron Automated, it's going to be quite helpful. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button. And go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. To stay up to date with when new videos come out, um, between this episode and next, I will try to get those other spawners set up. And that way we'll have access to those. Bats, Endermen, Zombies, and um, something else. Not villagers, because we can't do villagers, but there was something else I wanted to to do. Something Ender I.O. related. So, but I can't recall what it is now. But anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.